Ah, 2023. New year, new me, I suppose. But one thing is for certain with me, I hate change. So I will forever be trapped in the abyss of watching the same thing over and over again. And while I was down there watching How I Met Your Mother for the 9,554th time, I thought, hey, I should share some of these gems with the YouTubes because I know how much you all crave my opinion. These are all movies, some independent, some not, that I've mindlessly stored in the back of my brain over the years, which I believe are highly underrated in my profession opinion. I'm Mike from Collection of Madness, and these are my top 10 favorite independent slash underrated movies that you should definitely maybe watch in 2023. You'll get that reference here in one second. But during that one second, subscribe! Please, dear baby Jesus, subscribe. I'm practically begging at this point. Number 10, definitely maybe. Ha! Ah, told you you get that in one second. So I enjoy a nice rom-com. In fact, a lot of these on this list are rom-coms. Maybe at the end of the day, I'm just a hopeless rom-com myself, but that's not related to this and just should Shut up. First, I enjoy Ryan Reynolds. I don't know why. He just gets me. He plays Will Hayes in this movie who's going through a divorce. So what any man would do in this situation is tell his young daughter how he met the woman who he's about to divorce. Except plot twist. He talks about multiple women and she has to play a very traumatic game of Clue trying to figure out which one is her mom. Spicy. The amazing Isla Fisher is also in this film and it does play around with flashbacks and over the top comedy you expect in most rental films. But don't you worry, we'll be revisiting one of those shortly. Number 9, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. I really didn't like this movie at first to be completely honest. I was mainly like, oh wow, Jim Carrey made an independent movie. It must be good. Oh, wait, it's rubbish. Jokes aside, it took a while to grow on me and I started to see the genuine genius behind it. The movie was a part of the same decade in which we saw films like The Dark Knight, There Will Be Blood, Spirited Away, and many other exceptional films. It follows Joel, a man who, after learning his ex-girlfriend underwent a memory procedure to forget his existence, prepares to do the same. It's full of big themes about memory, experience, and how we define ourselves, and it stands apart from most of the work Jim Carrey did around that time. By the end of it, it'll have you double guessing what you just saw but it's worth the time and the headache number eight the wrestler it's probably because i love professional wrestling it, yeah it's probably because i like professional wrestling it's probably because i saw mickey rourke actually punch chris jericho in the face and was like oh my gosh that was a real and he's insane i don't think a movie about professional wrestling could take you on such an emotional journey rourke really studied the character here it takes you into what was the deep dark times of early wrestling and how it affected the lives and well-being of the performers and and also their families. From performing in school gyms, American legions, and pool halls while diving deep into the physical and mental pain of a pro wrestler, it was one of the best films of 2008 and would win work a nomination for an Oscar. Number seven, Gunpowder. Now I love me some Jon Snow. He was the reason I grew my hair out in 2017. Just look at those locks. So naturally when I found out he made an independent film in 2017 about an old Western, I was like, no kid, stop it. You're the king of the North and that's all that you'll ever be. Oh no, wait, this is actually pretty good. He plays Robert Catsby, a young Catholic nobleman who has recently lost both his wife and his father. And angry at his perception of punishment from society, he conjures a literal explosive plot to kill King James I when he sits in the Houses of Parliament. Catsby joined with a group of equally agitated men to an act of vengeance in a series of events that are still talked about in present day Britain. Yes, it's technically a three part miniseries, but was still considered a movie by the BBC, so it also counts for me. That rhymed. Number six, Age of Adeline. This is so stupid. Like, really stupid. And I like stupid things, but oh my gosh, to the osh, it's so good. Hear me out on this plot. Woman drives car on a snowy night and crashes. Woman dies. Woman is struck by lightning. Woman lives forever. Are you following me? Blake Lively plays Adeline, who has miraculously remained a youthful 29 years of age for nearly eight decades, never allowing herself to get close to anyone, lest they discover her secret. However, that all changes when she meets Alice Jones, whose dad is played by Harrison Ford, and who boinked her years before. Uh-oh, awkward! And all these plot twists and running questions make this film worth the watch. Number five, Silver Linings Playbook. Okay, hear me out. This is the first one that I'm like, oh yes, it was really, really popular among that time, but 
what? I still think it's underrated. Based on Matthew Quick's 2008 novel, The Silver Linings Playbook, saw the independent film adaptation blow all expectations out of the water, with both Bradley Cooper and Jennifer Lawrence giving exceptional performances and superb supporting acting by Robert De Niro and Jackie Weaver. After losing his job and wife and spending some time in a mental institution, Pat winds up living with his parents. He wants to rebuild his life and reunite with his wife, Nikki, but his parents would be so happy if he just shared their obsession with the Philadelphia Eagles, just like everyone else should. Go birds! Things get complicated when Pat meets Tiffany, who also suffers from some mental trauma and offers to help him reconnect with his wife if he will do something very important for her in exchange. This movie takes you on a journey of seeing life through the eyes of someone suffering with clinical depression and trauma and passes all expectations from the novel. Number four, liberal arts. Ah, look, it's Ted trying to make a movie. Go watch my top 10 How I Met Your Mother moments because it only has 19 views. Thanks. Josh Radner directed, produced, and starred in this independent film. That hooked me from the start. When 35-year-old Jesse returns to his college for his favorite professor's retirement party, he finds himself falling for a 19-year-old college student named Zibby, or better known to the world as Bat crazy witch lady. Jesse goes through different agonies of himself seeing a lot of his former destructive traits in students but finds Zibby's love for English and liberal arts attracting and far beyond her years. It's a story of trying to find the fountain of youth and knowing when to let go. Number three, Rocky Balboa. Is the Rocky Balboa franchise known worldwide? Yes. Do they have a friggin' statue of the guy in Philly? Yes. Did this movie do 157 million worldwide? Also, yes. Do I care? You know the answer. Although Sylvester Stallone's Rocky became an American gem in the 70s, this 2006 reboot wasn't expected to do well at all. Until the age Stallone and Antonio Tarver gave compelling performances in a movie about beating up people. The now retired Rocky is the owner of a Philadelphia restaurant and is still mourning the loss of his beloved wife, Adrian. He starts to get an itch for the sport and plans to re-enter the ring for a few low-profile local matches. All that changes when Rocky accepts the challenge to fight the world's reigning heavyweight champion Mason the Lion Dixon. How cool is that name? And delivers an emotional speech to his son about not giving up. This movie led to another trilogy in the Creed series and talks of a seventh film are in the works. Number two, Just Friends. Please stop judging me on Ryan Reynolds rom-coms. I can't stop. I may have a problem. I found this DVD, kids, do you know what a DVD is, in a Walmart discount basket eons ago and couldn't stop watching it. It is the epitome of horrible low-budget comedy movies known throughout the early 2000s. However, it sent me a couple of times. The amazing cast of Reynolds, Amy Smart, Anna Ferris, and Chris Klein make it manageable and entertaining. Reynolds plays Chris, a former, um, larger gentleman in his high school days who's in love with his best friend, Jamie Palmino. After an embarrassing incident, Chris runs away to become a fit businessman in the entertainment industry. After some plain issues, he reconnects with Jamie and is on a mission to finally make her his, with some interference from a pop diva and a former nerd turned hunk. It's just, oh, no, it's just so great. Go watch it. And number one, Violet Evergarden, the movie. If you normally watch this channel, you know I love anime, or maybe you don't because I made a top 10 anime list and only 68 of you watched it, so go watch my anime list now, please. Regardless, this original 13-episode series is based off the manga series of the same name. It took me a while to get into it, but after watching all the way through, Violet Evergarden became possibly my all-time favorite anime. So, when us fans found out we were finally getting a movie to wrap up the entire series, we certainly rejoiced, especially being released in the middle of the pandemic. While writing other people's emotions, she she may have neglected her own while learning how to feel them again. Violet Evergarden, the child soldier turned auto memory doll, writes letters that evoke the words her clients cannot. But when a terminally ill boy requests her service for his family, her own feelings about love and loss resurface. Now she must confront her past and the death of her beloved Major Gilbert. Or maybe not. This movie will send you on an emotional roller coaster and will not disappoint, especially if you're into sappy love animes like me. And that's that's our list. Leave a comment down below and make sure to subscribe. Tell us your favorite underrated movies that didn't make the list or trash me down in the comments like most of you like to do. Regardless, have a blessed day.